Hello, I'd like to present in this video a workflow that I enjoy using for certain hard surface projects. For example, I've created this 3D model that resembles a spaceship, but honestly, I didn't know what it would look like when I started, and that's not important. It's really just a practical exercise to show the creation process I use. You can see that the model has a fairly low number of vertices, around 6,000, so it's a workflow perfectly suited for use in video games. To create this kind of hard surface 3D, there are at least three quite popular workflows. The classic subdivision workflow is very practical in some cases, but also very demanding on topology. The Boolean workflow can be used for non-destructive production, easily obtaining complex shapes by addition or subtraction, but it's a workflow that I personally find a little complex to master in terms of shading and the use of add-ons. And finally, the sculpting workflow offers a very intuitive way to create complex designs without initially worrying about topology, but it may require a long retopology phase depending on usage. A very efficient workflow if using ZBrush, but much less practical in Blender. The workflow I like to use in Blender is a mix of the three I just presented. So, I'll start by creating basic shapes simply with subdivision. I don't worry too much about topology in relation to good or bad shading, but I do keep an eye on what my mesh looks like at one level of subdivision, because it's this level of subdivision that I'm going to use as the basis for my low poly mesh, so the curved shapes must have a sufficiently detailed level. I often prefer to use edge creases rather than bevels, to avoid unnecessarily complicating the topology. At this stage, I won't hesitate to use various shapes like these cylinders and place them where I want in the same logic as the Boolean workflow. The idea is that these shapes will be initially blended with the rest of the shape in a remesh at very high polygon density, often several million, then with sculpting tools, I'll soften the edges or add other details, and then these shapes will be reused as booleans on the low-poly version to add or subtract volume and make the mesh conform to its high-poly version. From now on, since I'm satisfied with what has been set up, I'll duplicate all the 3D objects to add them to a separate folder that I'll use later for the low poly version. Once that's done, I'll continue working on the high poly, and I'll need to first increase the subdivision level and apply all the modifiers on all the objects. Increasing the subdivision level will prevent the polygons from being too marked during the remesh. Once that's done, all objects are merged into one and a complete remesh is performed.
You have several solutions for this. You can do it directly from sculpture mode or in the object data properties tab. But personally, I prefer to simply use the remesh modifier, which I then apply if the result is satisfactory. Now that the remesh is done, I'll use the mesh filter tool in sculpture mode to smooth the entire mesh. Then with this smooth tool, I'll make more detailed corrections to the edges that bother me. Here, for example, it's very simple to create a smooth transition between the rounded and sharp part of this edge that I previously modified using the crease edge. This is something that would have taken me much more time and would have been more complicated if I had wanted to do it in the classic subdivision workflow by adding a bevel. It's really very simple and intuitive to adjust the smoothness of the angles without worrying about topology. The next step will be to create panel lines to make the design more interesting. There are several ways to create this in 3D. You can do it from sculpture tools or through more classic modeling using edges or during the texturing process. But I'll use another technique with curves that I'll place on the mesh and then subtract them with a boolean. I could have done it before the remesh, but I wanted to be able to smooth the rest of the shapes without risking damaging the panel lines. Using these curves has several advantages. Firstly, it allows me to be more precise and clean than I could have been with sculpting and to choose the shape of the incision well. Secondly, unlike the more classic modeling using edges, I don't take the risk of changing the shading or the shape of the object by adding bevels or new edges, and I'm freer to place the lines exactly where I want without considering topology. And thirdly, I'll be able to reuse these curves later to really and simply create the relief in my low poly. When the curves are in place, I convert them to mesh so that I can use a boolean modifier. Make sure your curve is well filled and that there are no holes before applying the boolean, otherwise it can cause problems. Once all the booleans have been applied, I repeat the same process, making a total remesh and then smoothing the edges. Now that the high poly version is finished, we'll leave it aside for a while and work on the low poly. I'll need to clean up the mesh a bit, remove unnecessary edges and reharmonize everything. I'll do the same with the boolean objects, of course. It's time to add the booleans. Once the booleans are applied, some cleaning up will be necessary. There's no need to be too perfectionist. The model will be triangulated later but it's still better to delete unnecessary vertices and reconnect certain edges when they are close. I insist on this, you can leave a lot of end gone, and it won't cause any problems later on. Now that everything is cleaner, I'll use a shrink wrap to best match the shape of my low poly to the high poly and make some adjustments. Then I'll need to activate auto smooth and define sharp edges to avoid bad shading when baking normal maps. I prefer to set auto smooth to the maximum to be sure to manually choose each edge. Keep in mind, if you don't already know, that all edges that have been marked as sharp must be cut when creating the UV map, otherwise, the edge will be extremely visible with the normal map, and that's something you really want to avoid. <laughs> 
So after marking my sharp edges, I start by using the selection tools to select all my sharp edges and also define them as seam edges. Then I continue to mark other seams and start the unwrapping. Now that I've created my UV map, I can create my normal map and recover all the details of the high poly model. But first, don't forget to triangulate the mesh, for which I simply use the triangulate modifier. I can now without any problem bake my normal map. There's nothing special here in this process, so if you're not familiar with UV mapping and baking and you're having trouble following, there are plenty of tutorials on this subject. You can now see that everything worked well, there are no shading problems, and the level of detail of the high poly is there. So to summarize, the idea is to use simple topology with subdivision, not worry too much about shading and topology. Prefer to use edge creases rather than bevels. Use booleans without restraint to add complex shapes without modifying the existing topology. Perform a remesh at several million polygons. Make modifications with sculpting tools, especially to smooth the edges. Then reuse a copy of the mesh before the remesh to create a low poly version. Clean up and apply the booleans already used on the high poly version. Then unwrap, triangulate, and bake a normal map. The important parts of this workflow have been presented, but I'll go a little further and show you what I did next on Substance Painter to create the textures. But this isn't a tutorial for Substance Painter, and there's nothing special about my way of doing things, so I won't make any comments. I've shown the step to bake the normal map, but of course if you're using Substance Painter then there's no point in doing that, it was just for the example.
And there you go. I hope I managed to be clear and show you a maybe slightly different and interesting way. You can ask questions in the comments, and I'll try to answer them.